Welcome to Under My Tree. Come sit down with me now. No, in my early days of being with Rowan, who I fondly call the real big man, we used to go on a lot of adventures together. We used to go fishing. He's a fisherman and he's a hunter. So I used to go with him and I used to capture the moments on camera. I was doing a lot of photography at the time. Well, I stopped because my camera caught fire while I was using it. Um, but that's another story <laughs> for another time. But I remember one particular incident. We were fishing. Well, he was fishing. I was in the boat. And I wanted so badly to catch a fish with my fishing line. And I, so I threw the line over and I was there patiently waiting and pulled up the, the reel and caught a tiny little crab. <laughs> anyway, I decided to use it as bait. So I threw it back in and I felt this tugging on the line, man, tugging on the line. And when I looked in and pulled up this fantastic fish that I thought I was going to pull up, you know, pull up this nice parrot on my line, you know, and I was so proud, you know, until I saw the spear mark where Mr. Dallas, my husband, the real big man, had caught a fish. I guess he didn't want me to dis be disappointed. <laughs> caught a fish and he put it on the hook <laughs> and tugged on it and, you know, came up laughing. So I just told him thanks because <laughs> I guess he was just trying to make me feel better. But as the day progressed, you know, he's there diving and I'm in the boat and the boat is anchored. But, you know, big bright sun, I fell asleep. When I fell asleep for about, I think, a good half hour, I realized that the boat, the anchor had pulled up and the boat drifted. And when I looked around, was far away. I would say at least a mile away from the boat. I mean, thankfully, he's a strong swimmer. But, you know, it got me to thinking about marriage and relationships. And, well, I'm married, so I think in terms of marriage. A lot of times when you think your relationship is anchored and you feel you can relax, you can let down your vigilance and... That is when the drift begins. Because you don't know, because you're not vigilant, because you're not being alert anymore, because you become comfortable, you don't know when the anchor pulled up. You don't know when the boat starts to drift because you're sleeping. And that was a big scare for me because one, I didn't know how to start the engine. I could drive the boat, you know, but <laughs> never know how to start the engine. And so I would have to go start the engine somehow to get to Rowan. What if he wasn't a strong swimmer? It could have been disastrous. I'm saying this to say, in our relationships, especially marriage, but I think it works for all relationships, is that you cannot afford to let your guard down. You cannot afford to slacken your vigilance. You have to keep checking to make sure that the anchor is holding. In order to make sure that the anchor doesn't slip, it has to be holding on to something really firm, a rock. And in marriages especially, in all relationships I believe, but in marriages especially, that rock has to be Jesus Christ. Because if you throw your anchor on something that is not firmly rooted, it's going to be uprooted and it's, it's going to cause you to drift. And in relationships, I mean, fidelity is not just about marriage, you know. Fidelity is about relationships. It's a faithfulness in your relationships. And if you're not careful, you know, all kinds of little things can sneak in and cause whatever you have anchored to, if it's not Jesus Christ, to just be moved. When the, when the, what you're anchored to moves, the boat, the boat, that's the relationship, must drift. And if you drift too far and the other party in your relationship is not strong enough to make it back to you, what's going to happen? And then if you don't know how to drive the boat, which is the relationship, you are also helpless. You have to know these things. You have to... You have to just be so careful and, and, and vigilant about the relationships you have and, and how your actions are going to affect how long they will last, how long, how strong they become. 
whether if there's a drift that you can make it back together and you do that by being able to I, I, I would think driving the boat would be similar to the communication to be able to communicate to pull you each back to the other and so I'm going to talk now about the role of the wife in biblical terms it's not what you're used to in terms of matriarchal or patriarchal societies in Genesis 2 verse 18 I think it is the Ezo, the help meet the Hebrew word is Ezo is actually a military word you know it means the person who sees danger and warns of it gentlemen when your wives have an instinct about something and warn you about something take heed especially if you believe that she's spiritually strong listen to her she's acting with a kind of wisdom that God has blessed wives with because the wife is vigilant she she sees the danger she warns her husband of the danger and when him decides that he's not going to do what he needs to do to deal with the danger she will get upon her face in prayer to deal with it i hope you enjoyed this episode of the boat adrift check your anchors check what you're anchored to and make sure it's a sure solid foundation and the best foundation is the one with jesus christ in it have a good evening